The Keychron Q1 goes on sale today with the 75% layout, gasket mount, and hot swap switches. It feels like a direct response to the success of the GMMK Pro. That's a board that ushered in a lot for its price point. It's done big sales, but it's also garnered some criticism for its acoustic profile, its sometimes spotty QC, and its poor implementation of the gasket mount. The Q1 is the first, but probably not the last board that's gonna try to right those wrongs. We're gonna see how it stacks up. You ready? Let's go! So the Q1 will be available as a bare bones for 149 US and fully built with switches and caps for 169. These are available in three different colors in both ANSI and ISO. On the GMMK side, you can't get ISO, but you're limited to black. Inside the box, you have a quick start guide, a super cheap wire key puller, switch puller, Allen keys, some extra hardware, the manual, and what appears to be pour on bumpers, which will probably make sense when we get the board apart. You also get a coiled cable. It is a step up from the plastic phone cord you get with some of the entry level boards and the basic braided glorious cable. It's fabric no tech flex or outer casing comes with a little baby aviator connector and it is USB-C to USB-C by default with a USB-A adapter included as well. It's not going to replace a true custom cable because this layout is real goofy, but it's a more thoughtful inclusion than most and I'm happy to see it's not being sold to us as an aftermarket accessory. My version of the board arrived pre-built. Keycaps here are die sub PBT. There are seven of these sets out right now, each priced at $40 per. Decent colorways, but I'm just not a fan of die sub because the legends usually look off to me. The font weights are really inconsistent. You can really see this in the BNM run, the weird KSP in the backspace key, the delete key just being all big for no reason. These might be revised a bit in the final version. The individually packaged sets they sent all have the same issues and they just are what they are. Cheap keycap sets in decent colorways that will hold up as long as you don't go examining them too closely. They're not double shot and they're not shine through. Pre-built versions will also have your choice of Gateron Phantom switches produced exclusively in partnership with Keychron. So you have Phantom Red Linears, Blue Click or the Phantom Browns, which sounds like a laundry issue, but is in fact a tactile switch. Still mushy though. Notably, even though the sockets here are five pin, these switches are plate mount or three pin and they are factory looped. Stim wobble is mids, I've definitely seen better and they aren't releasing any specs for materials used. While these do support RGB, they will tint that RGB appearance to whatever the color of the switch housing is. Keychron sells all these aftermarket as well and they're priced at $15 per pack of 35. That's 43 cents per, about two thirds the cost of the glorious switches, but there's nothing particularly unique or exciting about these. The Q1 is a CNC aluminum case, just a little less substantial in hand as the glorious version weighing just under 1.4 kilos, slightly rounded corners, but really very minimal geometry. There's no side lights or embossing. There's nothing really noteworthy here at all. The typing angle is 5.3 degrees with a front height of 21.6 millimeters. Instead of a knob or a rotary encoder in the top right, we have a badge here. I'm not sure what your options will be, but mine came with a nice printed version of my logo. Flattery will get you everywhere. Clearly influenced by the GMMK Pro or the Satisfaction 75, they've opted for a spaced version of the 75% layout with blocking, moving away from the single block of keys found on their K2 keyboard. We have a column of three keys on the far right, the right shift is a 1.75U, and the three modifiers to the right of the spacebar are all single unit keys. Cable connection is USB-C, top left, which I like, it's only slightly recessed. You also have the Mac Windows toggle there as well, which unfortunately feels like the same quality as it does on the rest of their boards. I wish they had made the K height here just a little taller. The LEDs are south facing here and there's enough of a gap that the LEDs and the switch housings are visible under almost every key from a regular typing position. The default typing sound is pretty high pitched and clacky though it is really consistent row to row. The stabs are not great. The spacebar does have some rattle. So these are screw in or PCB mount stabs and they appear to be factory lubed pretty heavy, at least on the wire. It is pretty obvious without even opening the board that unlike the GMMK Pro, the Q1 gasket mount system has some serious flex to it. When you inevitably open this board, be careful. The daughter board for the USB-C is connected with just this tiny little ribbon cable and you're gonna have to disconnect both these little connectors to access the stabilizers. This design is what allows the plate and the PCB to float on these gaskets while keeping that USB port still. It's also what's responsible for giving it the larger four head versus the GMMK, which outside of that has very similar dimensions. So it's eight Allen screws to get into the case, then the ribbon cable connectors, then six more screws to get in between the plate and the PCB. Given those tiny connectors, I would say this is just as annoying to work on as the GMMK Pro. Hot swap sockets here are Gateron. We do have some decent plate foam in here. The lube on the stab housing is pretty inconsistent. I would at least lube probably replace these. So it's a draw in the stab department. It is worth saying that the openings on the plate are very generous. So no matter what aftermarket 
socket stabs you go with, you're not gonna have any problems at all. The case foam, if it can be called that, is like a one millimeter thin wafer of foam. After some less than flattering sound tests hit YouTube, Keychron did reach out to say that retail versions will have some extra foam that you can put in place if you want to help mitigate some of that ping or hollow sound without affecting the flexibility of the gasket mount. And you definitely will want to because this case pings like a medieval blacksmith. This gasket mount is cushy, but the fear then is that the more foam you add, the more compressed the assembly would become. The concern there being that you would inch closer to that really compressed feeling on the G MMK Pro. I was actually able to get a sheet of sorbethane in there that's over three millimeters thick, so there's plenty of room inside. It does impact the performance of the gasket mount, but it also impacts the acoustic profile immensely. The Q1 is a really generous gasket mount. There's a lot of flex there. I would say that it looks more impressive in the typing test than it feels in real life, but I hate to sacrifice any of that to compensate for acoustics. For the second sound test, I wanna use a switch that everyone knows. These are Gap Black Ink V2s, lubed and filmed. So the answer for the right amount of case foam probably lands somewhere in the middle there because while this did really dampen the sound, it also did restrict that gasket mount quite a bit and it feels a lot like typing on the GMMK Pro. The GMMK Pro takes some well-deserved shots because it's such a muted board that it pretty much sounds the same regardless of what switch you put in there. And the Q1 with the Sorbethane sounds eerily close to the GMMK Pro, so there has to be some middle ground in there between extreme ping and extreme mute. The Q1 does have an ace up its sleeve and that it has support for both via and QMK. That's a big W. How they're doing this with the chip shortage, I don't know. On the GMMK Pro, if you got in early, your board supports QMK, but newer versions of that board do not, which means you're relying on the glorious software. Keychron is also dedicated to making boards that function as well in an Apple environment as they do a PC, so they include compatible keys and have all the standard Apple shortcuts as well. Out of your four available layers, the first two are reserved for Mac and layers three and four are for PC. Glorious has a knob, the Q1 does not. Interestingly though, the PCB under the badge not only has a socket, but additional solder points as well, which may mean a knob in the future. All right, so to wrap this up, these boards are very similar. The Q1 does the gasket mount better and it has QMK via and full Mac support, but has worse acoustics in a different way, which their extra foam may fix. Too much sound dampening makes this board sound and feel almost exactly like the GMMK Pro. Glorious has a knob, side lights, and a price tag that's $30 higher for their bare bones. If it seems like I'm not excited, it's because I'm not. There's just not enough here and I feel like we're gonna see a ton more of these GMMK Pro killers in the next coming months. So which one would I pick? Neither, to be honest, I'd grab a KBD67 Lite instead. I wanna thank Brilliant for sponsoring today's video. Brilliant is a learning website that puts a big focus on interactive learning. That's where you're not just watching or passively absorbing content or memorizing facts and formulas, you actually learn by doing. They've been busy this year too, really dialing up the level of interactivity. They recently revised one of my favorite courses, Scientific Thinking. This breaks down all the laws of physics and puts them together in visual interactive demos. So for me, I'm able to learn and retain at a much higher rate because I'm using physical insight to interact with things that mirror real world scenarios. Brilliant is definitely one of my favorite ways to learn, especially complex topics. There's a huge catalog that's as deep as it is broad. So regardless of your course of study, if it revolves around math and science, you can be sure Brilliant has you covered. When you're ready to get smarter, you can join me and a community of over 8 million learners and educators by clicking the link down in the description or visit visiting brilliant.org slash badctech. And as an added bonus, the first 200 of you to do so will receive 20% off the annual membership. Big thanks to Brilliant for continuing to support the channel and thank you so much for your time.